Here are five weight saving hacks to help reduce the weight of your bike. And remember, if you find this kind of content useful and you like it, well, like and subscribe. First up is all about disc brakes. Now hold your horses, keyboard warriors. I know some of you smarty pants out there are furiously typing away going, the easiest way to save weight on disc brakes is to use rim brakes. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Some people actually want to run disc brakes and this is for you. So first up, I would suggest switching to smaller rotors. If you're running bigger 160s or 180s, then by switching to smaller diameter 140s, that is going to save quite a bit of weight. So if we take this 160 rotor and place it on the scales, that's coming out at 120 grams. Whereas if I put this lighter 141 on, it's coming out at 80 grams. So across front and rear, you can save quite a bit. It also means by switching to a small diameter rotor, you remove this mounting plate, which goes on the rear rotor to like adjust where the caliper is positioned. And again, that saves an additional bonus 17 grams. If you want to switch your rotors, then we've got a dedicated video that shows you exactly how to do it. But a word of sort of advice, really, if you're thinking of switching to really exotic aftermarket rotors that aren't made by the big group set brands, because these do exist, in our experience, they don't really save much weight relative to how much they cost. The bang for your buck isn't great. And also often the braking performance isn't quite as good. So personally, I'd stick to the, the rotors of your particular group set brand, such as these Jura Ace ones. Another disc brake weight saving for you, disc brake lovers, through axles. Now the standard through axles that come with most disc brake bikes are usually solid steel affairs that are pretty heavy. However, you've got the option of switching to some higher spec ones or maybe even some aftermarket ones. Just make sure they fit your specific bike as it's a huge weight saving. So this is actually a more premium through axle that's off my Orbea Orca. Now it's got a couple of design features to save weight. So if you look, it's actually a hoy there, hollow. Um, so it's just been drilled out, it's still made of steel. And then also the shaping of it, you can see that it's had a section removed in the middle again to save weight. So this through axle weighs just 24 grams, which is about half of what they can weigh. It's easy for a front through axle to weigh 50, 60 grams. So that's quite a big saving. Another feature of it that helps lose weight is the fact that it's leverless. Instead, it's got a six mil Allen key socket in the end, so that you, if you want to remove it from your bike, just make sure you've got your multi-tool with you, six mil socket, and then you can tighten it or loosen it. But I also like having a leverless through axle because this makes your bike look neater at the front. You don't have a lever sticking out, and it's a bit more aero as well, only a tiny bit, but you don't have that lever sticking out into the wind. Next up is inner tubes and tires. Now these represent a really significant saving that you can make by switching to a TPU inner tube, such as this yellow Pirelli one. I mean, it looks like a prophylactic. Trust me, it's, it's an inner tube. Now these just weigh 35 grams. Now 35 grams is tiny when you compare that to a standard black butyl tube, which usually weighs, if it's a standard one, over 100 grams. Of course, this is then split across both of your wheels to give an even bigger saving. And if you're carrying a spare one of these, instead of a normal inner tube in your saddlebag, you're saving weight there too. Inner tubes like this are considerably more expensive than a standard butyl tube, but it's a much more cost-effective way to save weight on your bike if you compare it to say wheels or a frame to save 100 grams on a set of wheels is gonna cost you hundreds. Similarly, you can save a huge amount of weight by switching to a lightweight time trial performance tire. These will save huge amounts over a winter tire, but they'll also save a considerable amount over a performance summer tire that's designed for more general use. So for example, a Pirelli TT tire is 165 grams. If you compare that to their 26 millimeter TLRP0, yes, it's a tubeless tire, but that's around 270 grams. So a huge saving when you consider it's across two tires. Of course, a performance time trial tire is lighter for a reason. It's not magic. It won't last as many miles and it has considerably less puncture protection, which means it's maybe not as good for all round use, but for a one-off performance event where you wanna maximize how light your bike is, such as a hill climb, it's a great option. 
Next up, have you considered running limited gears? So typically now bikes come with 11 or 12 speed cassettes and two chain rings at the front. But for your chosen event where you're looking to maximize performance, you might not need all of your gears. Maybe it's a hill climb or a race on like a mountain TT, or maybe you're planning to do an Everesting. In which case, there's a good chance that you won't need half of the gears you've got. So why not remove them from your bike? If you're using mechanical gears, it can be a bit more precarious, but you can use the limit screws on the rear derailleur to effectively lock off the gears that you want and limit the mechanical movement of the derailleur so that it doesn't hopefully drop the chain off the limited gears that you have and into kind of no man's land on the free hub body. Cassettes are pretty heavy. This is heavier than most road cassettes because it's a massive wide range cassette off a gravel bike and it weighs 400 grams. But well, you do the maths, you take half the gears away, you've halved that weight to 200 grams, which is a huge saving. You may also want to consider switching from a two by setup at the front down to a one by setup. This saves considerable weight because you lose the weight of a chain ring. You also lose the weight of your front derailleur as you can just take it off. But if you do do this, remember it's worth switching to a narrow wide chain ring because otherwise you risk dropping your chain as the tooth profile isn't designed for it. And well, yeah, you don't want to drop your chain, do you? Now, if you do switch to limited gears, something else you might want to reassess is the length of your chain. And this can give you an opportunity to run a slightly shorter chain, which too can save a bit of weight, although not much. You really want to just change the length of your chain so that you've got optimum shifting and the right length chain, not really to save weight. But let me show you, let's take some links out. So I've just taken off four links. Let's see how much this weighs on a standard Shimano chain. Nine grams. Every little helps. And finally, my favorite, bar tape. I mean, who actually needs bar tape anyway? GCN's very own stick, Andrew Feather. He loves not riding with bar tape. In fact, he rides without bar tape all the time. The reason being that it can weigh a considerable amount. So I've got some special lightweight bar tape. This is, well, yeah, it doesn't weigh much for bar tape. This is premium lightweight stuff. And this weighs 60 grams. Now that's a lightweight. If you use some normal sort of heavy standard bar tape, you're probably looking well over 100 grams. That's 100 grams you can save just by taking it off. But if you still want some grip, because running bar tape can be a little bit slippy, especially if it's wet or your hands get sweaty, then you could consider applying some skateboard grip tape to your bars, uh, just in key contact points, just to give yourself a bit more friction. It's important to remember though that bar tape does also provide some cushioning. So for longer rides, it might not be very comfortable, um, but you can consider running just bar tape in key locations. You don't need to wrap the entire bar, so you might wanna run it just on the drops, but not on the tops, or you might wanna run it just on the tops. Whatever you like, it's up to you. So there you have it. There's five quick weight saving hacks. Let us know your hacks down in the comments section below, because this is an exhaustive list, and I'm keen to hear what you've done, especially the more cost-effective, the better. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want some of the greatest merch available to humanity, check out shop.globalcyclingnetwork, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.